am your host, Heather Dawson, and welcome to RC Spotlight, an exciting program highlighting businesses here in Rancho Cucamonga. Just another reason to work, play, and live in our beautiful city. It's hard to believe the Victoria Garden Shopping Mall is celebrating its 10th year anniversary, and as Madison Perry shows us, it's undergoing major renovations to continue to be relevant in the community with a more urban feel. Ever since Victoria Gardens opened its doors in 2004, the mall has made Rancho Cucamonga a Southern California hotspot. People have come from all over to see what Victoria Gardens has to offer. And now, to celebrate a decade of success, the mall is undergoing major reconstruction. The Victoria Gardens Shopping Mall recently celebrated its 10th year in business and in honor of its anniversary, the shopping center is undergoing major renovations to continue to be relevant in the community with a more urban feel. Currently, uh, out on property, we have a full streetscape renovation project undergoing, focusing primarily on Monet Avenue. Uh, and that's on our west side of the center, located uh, that runs north-south, if you will. Along with the reconstruction of streetscaping, Victoria Gardens is beginning to provide more opportunities for connection. For example, parklets will be provided for many to rest and recharge after a full day of shopping. Uh, with the renovation, you'll see new streetscapes, new colors, uh, new uh, lighting projects, and some fa facade changes through existing retailers. And the best part is, even during all of this reconstruction, the mall has remained shopper friendly by providing easy access for both pedestrians and vehicles. If they visit our website, a Victoria Gardens website, they can definitely find more information on the renovation project itself. In fact, currently on the website, we have uh, introduced a Words on Pavement art program uh, that we're soliciting the community to participate in, and that's just through a submittal poll middle process. We're excited that um, to offer that and Monet Avenue will, will also introduce uh, several elements of art pieces that we are working collaboratively with the city and the community. So there will be a lot of information on there along with that they'll have a, a calendar of events that are current information that's going on at the center through our movies in the park that we'll be introducing as well as concerts in the park. Two brand new eateries are coming to Victoria Gardens as well. The Melt, along with the ever popular Blaze Pizza, are expected to be ready to serve by the end of this summer. We currently have uh, approximately 20 retailers from between now and the end of the year that will be going undergoing a complete renovation, whether that be interior or exterior renovation. So we have lots going on at the center, but the magnitude and the size of the property will, uh, in itself uh, will help manage the construction process. But uh, those tenants that have been here with us 10 years will kind of look refreshed and re renewed and rejuvenized. So we definitely want to encourage everyone to come out and see us. From Victoria Gardens, I'm Madison Perry for RC Spotlight. How would you like to enter the shark tank? A few brave teachers did just that, all for a good cause. Here's Georgette Copes. Quiet on the set. One, two, three, action. Hello, I'm Ivan in the pool. And I'm Laura Weber. We're today, today in history, October 13th. Okay, cut. School teacher Yvette Schemenauer is holding this after-school class called Shark Bites. Students are filmed for a school news segment that broadcasts for all kids on campus. Well, last year during the spring, during the last school year, I was invited by some of my colleagues to attend a Q technology conference in Palm Springs. And I attended that conference and one of the classes there was about video production. 
and having the students develop a video announcement rather than just hearing it auditorily over the loudspeaker. So from that, I came back to Summit Intermediate and I asked my principal, Mrs. Arita, if I could incorporate what I learned into my elective class. And this is Joke of the Week. So, Sophia, do you want to hear a joke? Sure. Knock, knock. Who's there? Cows go. Cows go who? Cows go moo, not who. <laughs> I loved it when I was in middle school. And so I thought, oh, that would probably be really good for these students. They would love to do it. And they love being hands-on. And the announcements. They, they love hearing what's going on in school and visually seeing it. Welcome, Welcome to Shark Doppler weather. weather. Well, it seems the Santa Ana winds are coming back. Yep. These winds are strong, dry, downslope winds. They start inland and affect Southern California and Northern Baja California. A special visit for students at Summit Intermediate School. Rancho Cucamonga Mayor L. Dennis Michael stopped by with some words of encouragement. Okay, but there is a sidewalk on the west side, right? Okay, I, I think we'll make sure that there's a sidewalk on one side of the street or the other uh, by the fire station there, okay? After the kids asked their questions, the mayor sat down for his interview in the shark seat. Three, action. International Safe Routes to School Day is on Wednesday, October 8th, and is taking effect in more than 40 countries worldwide. The mayor spent some time talking with a group of enthusiastic students. They asked many questions about Walk to School Day, and they were curious about how the city is making it safer to walk or ride your bike to school. I want to thank you all for letting me come here and visit with you today. And uh, I think on October 8th, uh, we're going to be back up here at one of the schools. Students were very excited to learn more about the media industry as the school continues to offer the Shark Bites program at Summit Intermediate School. Reporting for RC Spotlight, I'm Georgette Copes. Now let's head to the grand opening of Fonda Don Chan Mexican Restaurant. And as Madison Perry shows us, it's a new restaurant full of liveliness, culture, and fine cuisine. And their customers can't seem to get enough. Hi, I'm Madison Perry here on the red carpet at the grand opening of Fonda Don Chan. So let's head on inside to see what makes this new authentic Mexican cuisine so authentic. Well, uh, we picked the name Fonda Don Chan because this is Don Chan, so he actually exists. He's back there in the kitchen, he's, you know, starts at 4.30 in the morning and just cooks everything fresh. Uh, Fonda means homestyle cooking. Don is Mr. and Asuncion is Chon. So for it's a typical old school name, Chon. After choosing to expand from their Covina location, Fonda Don Chon has finally made its arrival in Rancho Cucamonga and their customers could not be happier. My opinion, the best location. Foothill Boulevard, you know, pretty fairly close to most everything around Rancho Cucamonga and uh, the location has definitely served us well since we actually opened the door. So um, I'm glad we actually chose Rancho Cucamonga because the uh, clientele, the customers are really, you know, supportive. And of course they love our food, so it works out great. I think we just picked up something from the buffet, traditional beans and rice and some meat. Mm -hmm. What do you think about it? Oh, it's delicious, it's very delicious. Have you ever been to Fonda John Chan before? I was. I was here a couple of months ago when they had their soft opening. The food is excellent. The chef does an excellent job. It's not too spicy. It's just spicy enough to give you the flavors of the food that you're eating. So I've got two different kinds of shrimp and an enchilada and some rice and beans. Spot on. The restaurant is family owned and operated. The owner's wife does all of the cooking at their Covina location and the actual Fonda Don Chan is the head chef here in Rancho. Uh, some of the signature dishes, I guess they're probably top four. The number one is probably one that sells the most and that's uh, typical in the state of Jalisco, which is the state that we represent, which is a molcajete. A molcajete basically is a molten rock and it's carved out into a dish. So it's a molten, molten rock dish. And inside it comes with shrimp, uh, chicken, steak, uh, cheese, salsa, it just, 
it's definitely an exotic dish. So for people that are not accustomed to, you know, seeing something like that, that would definitely be the dish that we would recommend. Some more of the restaurant's most well-known and loved meals include a 10-day marinated steak, a deliciously healthy chipotle chicken dish, and an entree known as Chef Don Chan's seafood masterpiece. We have uh, the most selling thing here in the restaurant is our micheladas. We actually do in-house micheladas and they sell a lot. That's our number one selling thing. So if you haven't tasted one, make sure you actually taste one because they're really, really flavorful. It's a meal in itself, if you will. Fonda Don Chan's interior decor was designed to emulate the region in which the food comes from, specifically the Mexican state Jalisco. For example, there is a pink room that signifies Zacatecas, a state known for their meats, a room decorated with skulls to represent Guanajuato, a state known for the Day of the Dead, and more. We saved the best for last, which is Jalisco in the middle, and that's where the food comes out, so that's right there where the buffet is at, and on top it says all the little towns that are in Jalisco. So people come in and they're like, oh, that's my town. So it brings the, uh, I guess, the, the homey Mexican, you know, town into the whole restaurant. And that kind of creates the whole region, kind of what I was telling you. So, um, and all the colors, of course. It, it's a very happy, very festive, you know, atmosphere. From Fonda Don Chan, I'm Madison Perry with RC Spotlight. Well, Jen's Korean barbecue house is something you won't want to miss. Let's check it out. Jen's Korean barbecue has defied the limits of any ordinary Korean cuisine by bringing in flavors from all around the world to create a unique, boundless menu. They specialize in everything from meat to seafood and vegetables, giving everyone an experience that will give their palate a new perception for taste. We sat down with the restaurant's operations manager to discuss some of the entrees that the customers just can't seem to get enough of. I would say that every customer has their own preference. Um, we have over 30 meats to choose from, so they usually start with the brisket because it's easy to cook and it tastes really well, so they can munch on that while they're choosing whatever else they want to choose. Um, as far as our drinks go, we have like a variety of fountain drinks and also we have 36 beers and we have wines to choose from and a really good soju-based cocktails. Not only is the wide selection of dining options incredible, but the atmosphere is nothing like you would ever expect. Bright lights, intriguing artwork, and vibrant colors give the restaurant a more modern feel, appealing to customers of all ages. I think it's very lively and bright, vibrant. Um, also, we made it so that the environment is great for any kind of vacation. It's perfect for that. Um, you can come here for graduations, for birthdays, for anniversaries even, um, or just to come here to eat with your friends and family. Say Jen Korean Barbecue is really for anyone. For It's perfect for families and friends and for all diversity of people. It's, it's really awesome. I love it here. And I think it's really great. Surf's is good and the place is really nice. Yeah, all the food is good and you keep trying new things every time you come, so you can't really go wrong with that. All of the food is freshly cut in the back before it's brought out to the customers for them to cook it just how they like it. Everyone has their favorite specialty, and it's the perfect place for a healthy night out. I was really excited because I've been in Cerritos and Dustin, and it's really good. I like the premium of the, uh, of the meat. Like high quality. <laughs> and what's special about our grills actually is that um, if you see the smaller grills, which are the ones with the smaller lights overheads without the hoods, um, the smoke goes to the side of it so that it doesn't ever get in your face, it doesn't make you smell as much as other Korean barbecues. Customer service is vital to Jen's Korean barbecue. Their servers make sure to recommend various dishes that combined will give the customer a flavor-filled experience of a lifetime. Yeah, um, our servers actually go the extra mile with customer service and they cook it for you, they cut your meat for you, um, just whatever you need. We have shrimp that they actually sit there and peel for you with their gloves on and all that. So to reach us on social media, you can go on our Yelp page. We have our social media, Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter. More information on Jen's Korean Barbecue can also be found on their website. Thanks for watching. I'm Madison Perry with RC Spotlight. 
Another great restaurant to check out is Seafood City, known as the home away from home for the Filipino Asian community. Marco Gutierrez shows us why Rancho Cucamonga is the perfect destination for this tasty treat. Seafood City is a one-stop destination that aims to serve and satisfy the needs of the thriving and diverse ethnic population in Rancho Cucamonga. We offer a variety of uh, consumer goods like our fresh produce, meat and seafood. And they're all fresh and uh, we're ready to clean for them free and um, at no extra charge, and then we, we fry for them too. It's not only popular from uh, Filipino, but uh, also internationally. And one of its premium service departments is Grill City, which offers traditional Filipino favorites and barbecue catering services for any occasion. Spare yourself the hassle of shopping, cutting, cooking, grilling, and washing up after that. Grill City is the home of the Filipino-style barbecue here in America. We're ready to cater to your party of five to a party of 600 people. In the last three years, Grill City has sold over one million barbecue trays across their 14 stores, where they specialize in grilled meats, fish, and vegetables, appealing to the appetite of a variety of cultures in this community. The Rancho Cucamonga being um, a very diverse uh, community, so um, it is also our, our opportunity to introduce our food to, uh, you know, a wider base. So, if you're in the mood for some great tasting, traditional Filipino-style barbecue, come on down to Grill City inside Seafood City, located at 11098 East Foothill Boulevard. Reporting for RC Spotlight, I'm Marco Gutierrez. Public safety means everything to the people of Rancho Cucamonga. That's why we're here at the City Hall to find out how residents can become more informed on the overall safety of this community. So the Public Safety Performance Dashboard is an online tool that allows the city to share um, data, metrics, and performance information about what the city is doing specifically within our public safety departments. So the dashboard is measuring information for fire, um, our fire department as well as our police department, and we have a variety of data metrics on there. This new and innovative tool will allow for citizens to have all of the information regarding the city's public safety right at their fingertips. Anyone with internet access can access the performance dashboard um, by just typing in performance.cityofrc.us. And the dashboard is set up with a um, variety of charts and narrative data and photos that helps tell the story for each of the specific areas that we're measuring. Some specific data that is being shared includes both police and fire department response times, traffic accidents, crime reduction rates, calls for emergency services, high hazard inspections, and more. So um, any user that's on the site can drill down into the chart to see the underlying data that is actually making up the um, figures that are put within the chart. Um, specifically for part one and part two crimes, if you drill down into it, you can actually get a snapshot of each crime that has occurred in the city for the years that are displayed on the chart. So I believe overall from 2012 all the way down into 2015 year to date, we have almost over 40,000 separate crime incidences that are listed. And you can see the actual date of when the crime occurred, um, the description of the crime, and then whether or not it was part one or part two crimes. So this really helps give residents an idea of the actual specific types of crimes that are occurring with the city, not just being showed to them in just an overview um, demonstration of a chart, but actually a list of each, of each type of crime that's occurring. The creation of a crime map is also in the works to provide viewers with a geographic snapshot of the locations of various public safety occurrences. 
I think it helps keep our residents more informed and um, more engaged in what's taking place in the community. It's, it's a way for the city to really improve transparency. We want to make sure we're putting all of the information out there for our residents to have access to. So residents can really see what a great job our city is doing in terms of providing these types of public safety services. And Rancho Cucamonga really is one of the safest communities within the Inland Empire area. And we are very proud of that. And and we are very fortunate to have this tool to be able to share that information with the community. Although this dashboard is beginning with solely the police and fire departments, expansions are being made to include information on each citywide department. Anyone that's interested in finding out more information can contact the City of Rancho Cucamonga uh, in the City Manager's Office and we can provide them with additional information on what exactly we're sharing and what we have available on the, the dashboard. From City Hall, I'm Madison Perry with RC Spotlight. The spectacular home that Sam Maloof crafted for his wife Alfreda and their family remains in Alta Loma as a museum and home of the Sam and Alfreda Maloof Foundation for Arts and Crafts. With pieces in some of the most prestigious museums in the world, it's hard to believe that right up to his passing, Sam had a hard time acknowledging how good his work was. Well, I never knew if I was good enough. I still, uh, every time I make a piece, even now after 67 years, uh, and everything that I make is on commission, uh, I wonder if the client is going to like it. I hope they like it. And people did like Maloof's work. The furniture that Sam created started when he married his wife, Alfreda. You see, the young couple had very little money or furniture, so Sam went to work. I made uh, furniture out of whatever I could find, scrap wood, wood that was done each and all. And uh, uh, several people approached me and wanted furniture, and I didn't know if I should do it or not. But my job as a graphic artist, and, uh, Rita said, we, we can do it, Sam. We really can do it. And with her encouragement and her love, I quit my job and started making furniture. Sam's work was so impressive, it drew a lot of attention, first from other young married couples, then celebrities, and all the way up to presidents, all wanting a piece of furniture from Maloof. Everything from rocking chairs to tables. Maloof says that President Reagan may have described his work best. I went to Washington um, and met them, and it was presented to President. And I remember he said, I just didn't know that people made things like this by hand anymore. In the year 2000, when the 210 freeway was extended into Rancho, it forced the relocation of the historic residence. The home was moved to a new six-acre site, piece by piece, and preserved as a museum. Now, Maloof's love of wood and design is what makes the museum so incredible. It's all of Maloof's heart and soul in one building. Entering the museum almost feels like returning to a bygone era, and people continue to come from all over to see Sam's work at the museum. And while Sam passed away in 2009 at the age of 93, he continued working right up to his death. Since opening their first gym in 1998 and the growing popularity in the sport of rock climbing, Hangar 18 Indoor Climbing Gym has opened its second newest location in Rancho Cucamonga. We've grown exponentially in the past like 18 years that we've been open. We got a great location here, really accessible to everyone who's in the Rancho community. We're right by Victoria Gardens. It's a great place to come, climb, and then go hang out afterwards. The new massive state-of-the-art facility offers 4,200 square feet of dedicated boulder terrain with problems of all styles and levels of difficulty. Bouldering is a little bit more like the wind sprints of climbing. Uh, when you're on the top rope, it's a little bit longer of a distance and it's a little bit easier technique and strength-wise. Bouldering, you only have about 12 or 15 feet to get off the ground, so it's very strength-oriented and technique-oriented. That being said, we do have climbs in here that are very easy for kids and beginners, all the way up to very, very advanced. You definitely work out every part of your body, so that's a plus. Also just meeting other people too. I, I met uh, former alumni from my school and also other people that I climb outdoors, so that's really helped me progress. 
We see everyone from little kids that come in here and climb a couple times a week in the mornings all the way up to professional athletes who come in here. Uh, we see a lot of pro rock climbers from other gyms in Colorado or from the East Coast come down and hit our gyms when they're in Southern California. And then everyone from your normal day-to-day -day working people. Because we're in a warehouse district, we see a lot of people who just are working come over on their lunch break to get a quick workout in. My job, I'm an arborist, so I climb trees for a living. And a buddy of mine who is a rock climber told me you'd really like it, so I came down and checked it out, fell in love with the sport. Hangar 18 has all climbing gear and staff to accommodate your next group event. From field trips to church groups, team building and corporate events. We do have a great involvement with the community. Uh, we're starting to do movie nights here so all of our members and community members can come in and watch climbing movies uh, after hours here. We project them onto one of the big walls so you get a big screen feel for it. You can just kind of come and hang out, it's really nice. And here at Hangar, it's a very close-knit community that's actually very easy to get plugged into and involved with and you feel like you belong here. Can't say I've ever met a climber that wasn't an amazing person, which is a wonderful thing in this world. It's such a good community because people will help each other out when they're climbing and so you just make friends that way, you introduce yourself and um, I've probably gotten to become friends with at least 15 different people. Um, we actually created a group called Sticky Bandits Crew, so that's our climbing group that we have. Hangar 18 is known for its world-class route setting and offers all of the latest and greatest shapes from Climate Holds, made in a production facility right next door. We only use Climate Holds here, so we're actually the only gym in the world that uses Climate Holds exclusively, which is another local rancho business. It's one of the biggest hold distributors in the world. Uh, makes climbing holds that we ship everywhere, Canada, Japan, Norway, it goes all over the world. This gym in particular is the only gym in the world that is exclusively Climate Holds, and because they are so closely connected, uh, we do get holds that aren't released to the public yet in here. So there's climbing holds here that are only available in the rancho location at this time. Hangar 18 offers special discounts of gear and merchandise to its members and has everything you need to get started. Our normal memberships are $46. We do offer discounts for military, fire, police, students. Uh, there's a ton of different discounts available. With the discount, it's $33 a month. There's no initiation fees or contracts of any kind. Uh, it just runs month to month billing. It's a great deal because you get access to all eight of the gyms, all the gears included, rental, as well as lessons. Whether you're a beginner or experienced climber, come on down to Hangar 18 where you'll experience some of the best climbing possible. For more information, check out ClimbHangar18.com. Reporting for RC Spotlight, I'm Marco Gutierrez. And that'll do it for this episode of RC Spotlight. Thank you so much for tuning in. And remember, if you missed any part of our show, you can go to our website. I'm your host, Heather Dawson. We'll see you next time. It's fun to sing, zippity zip zip zin zin zin, dance, and play music every day. Yeah, go for it! Doing something artistic inspires creativity and helps you succeed in school and life. Hooray! Play music, paint, and dance together as a family. Come on, team! Blast off with the arts. Blast off! For 10 ways to add the arts into your life, visit AmericansForTheArts.org.
Sounds like you could use some Van Goghurt. It's fortified with arch-rich nutrients to improve your math and reading skills. Catch! Van Goghurt, thanks. So what's the deal with your ear? Always with the ear, huh? Feed your kids the arts. For 10 simple ways to learn how, visit americansforthearts.org.